she turned out. Yeah, she turned. Hey. <laughs> Hey, yo, what's good, you guys? Y'all already know who it is, man. It's Boomer with Bali Star, and today we are getting into the terrifying truth about chimps of Casual Ge Geographic. Yeah, um, yeah, man, I remember when I was young, man, I've always uh, wanted, I guess back then I would say a chimp. Now I say a monkey, because now I want a monkey. You know what I'm saying? The dream hasn't stopped. It just changed a little bit once I started to find out more as I grew up. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I used to be like, oh, I want to have a chimp. I want to have a pet chimp. I want to have a pet chimp. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to have a chimpanzee for a friend. And then I grew up. I saw how wide I, wide I almost could be. And then I saw how chimps can be. Yeah, so uh, my criteria switched up a bit. Now I want to have a monkey. But I want the monkey that everybody else has, like what they call capuchins or something, you know what I'm saying? Since I want the easily, I want, I want the most easiest trained monkey. The, most, the monkey that can be trained the most easiest, easily. Like, I was trying to say like easily, but uh, yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's all I can say, man. I mean, I'm going to let him tell it. You feel me? But make sure you hit that like down below, man. Subscribe if you're new, man. Join up with the all-star gang up in this thing. And yeah, let's get straight on into it. Let's get it. One of the world's scariest animals just got a whole lot scarier. And Planet of the Apes is slowly becoming nonfiction. Because apparently chimpanzees are out here murking the rivers. Scientists in 2020 gorillas. were witnessed a troop of chimpanzees basically jumping a family of gorillas. And when I say gang, we're talking about almost 30 chimps pressing a family of five. Keep in mind a silverback can weigh up to 400 pounds, you could probably bench press your car. And according to witnesses, the silverback was eating chimps left and right like they were paper mache. But eventually the chimps overwhelmed the bigger silverback and even kidnapped a baby gorilla. I'm not going to tell you exactly what they did, but that family of five became a party of four. And it wasn't even the last time. Because later that year, scientists watched the same group of chimpanzees do the same exact thing. Square up with a family of gorillas, kidnap the baby, and erase its name from the gorilla census. And it's not like we didn't know chimps were about that. They often hunt bush babies and vervet monkeys, and we've even seen them use weapons like spears to do it. But it's one thing to hunt something that weighs like five skittles. Going gorillas is another tier of Black Air Force activity. Which is why I'd rather be locked in a room with a jaguar than a chimp. Because at least a jaguar gonna make it quick. That's exactly right. Chimpanzees have been known to hunt using spears in the way they do it is not pretty. So what you gotta remember is these sociopaths share about 98% of their DNA with us, and they have more in common with humans than just thumbs. They're part of the special class of animals that can create and use tools, and chimps are probably the best at it. They'll take twigs, stick them in mounds, and literally go fishing for termites. They'll use stones as hammers to crack open nuts, and it's actually a lot harder than it looks. They'll use leaves as sponges to drink water, sticks to spill honey from bees. Some have even been seen making and using stone plates, which are really close to what early humans used to make back then. But yeah, chimps also use spears by breaking off a stick, sharpening one end with their teeth, and then shoving it into the hollow part of a tree trunk. Because they know that's where bush babies sleep. Scientists watched them stab bush babies and force them out of their hiding spot in trees, where they proceeded to tear them apart and eat them alive. So they don't actually eat the spear the way a lot of people probably thought, but they're definitely too smart for everyone else's good. Also, fun fact, out of all the animals I've talked about, a chimp was probably the closest to ending my entire way of life. But that's a story for another video. All right, so here's a story of how a chimpanzee nearly ended my entire way of life. So this was in Senegal, that little country right there. I was visiting for a couple months. Me and some family decided to go to a zoo that, looking back, was way too run down to be called an actual zoo. The only thing separating the chimps from the general public were prison bars that were wide enough to stick your hand through. And before you even think it, no, I did not stick my hand into the chimp cage. I was seven, but I wasn't stupid. Now, if you wanted to see stupid, you'd have to look at the people around us. But some of them thought it'd be funny to throw things inside the chimp enclosure. That's what I like, heard it, but Hence I guess... that one white lady that kept a, a pet chimp. You know what I'm saying? I think this was on the news or something. Everybody heard about this. Her friend, like, her face got... Her friend's face got ripped off by the chimp and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh. To scare it? Either way, nobody in that zoo was winning an award. Especially when someone started tossing rocks in there. Yeah. Let the stupidity marinate. 
I just remember watching the chimpanzee just sit there and take it. Until the people ran out of rocks. It wasn't until the chimpanzee started picking the rocks up that the people realized just what they did. They just gave an animal with thumbs and no regard for anything human ammo. So yeah, as you'd expect, the chimp started fastballing the stones back at the crowd and all we could do was run and take cover. And I vividly remember crouching behind the bench and when I got up, a rock flew past not more than four inches past my right eye. I was really just bad luck away from either doing this video with a glass eye or not doing this video at all. Look, you can say size matters all you want, but four inches made a difference that day. This picture might look cute, but it's actually one of the most disturbing things you'll ever see. I'm about to tell you one of the most messed up stories you've never heard of. So this guy, Dr. Kellogg, had the question I'm sure all of us have had at least once. What would happen if you raised a human without teaching it a language or having it around any other humans? Like a nature versus nurture kind of thing. It's one thing to think it, it's another to be on CPS's watch list. So this guy had a human son, Donald, that he raised with a female chimpanzee he adopted named Gua. So he treated 10-month-old Donald and 7-month-old Gua the same in ways that would have had CPS, PETA, and the Geneva Convention pulled it up. The experiment was weird. He would tap on both of their heads with Wait, his... Wait, he, like, he called the dude Kellogg? Like, the dude's name was Kellogg? Right, as in Kellogg's fo Frosted Flakes? Fudgy? I hope that's not what he said, for real. Size matters all you want. But four inches made a difference that day. This picture might look cute, but it's actually one of the most disturbing things you'll ever see. I'm about to tell you one of the most messed up stories you've never heard of. So this guy, Dr. Kellogg, had the question I'm sure all of us oh, have Dr. had. Dr. Kellogg. Like or something, so this, so something he treated I heard him old Donald and seven-month-old Guap the same in ways that would have had CPS, PETA, and the Geneva Convention pulling up. The experiment was weird. He would tap on both of their heads with a spoon just to hear the differences in the sound of their skulls. He would purposely make loud noises and provoke them just to see who would react first. At one point, he even spun Donald around on a high chair until he started crying. It got really dark really fast, especially when the human Donald started acting like his surrogate chimp sister, walking on all fours, being overly aggressive, and even biting people. It's a shame the Pikachu meme didn't exist back then. Donald would bark like Gua when he wanted food and refused to walk on two feet even though he could. Eventually, the man who somehow graduated with a doctorate in psychology from Columbia realized that he was ruining his son. So he called the experiment off. The chimpanzee that they treated like a daughter and was part of their family, yeah, they packed her up and sent her away to be part of another experiment, where she was unalive by pneumonia a few months later. As for Donald, he grew to be an adult and eventually became a doctor, until he deleted himself at the age of 42. And to add insult to whatever seasoned hell this was supposed to be, if you go over to Dr. Kellogg's Wikipedia, he was described as a guy who had no talk. There are a lot of people called Kellogg, or, you know, you know, with that last name, I'm sure. ...for those who are unethical. Moral of this video, Thanos should start a GoFundMe. I'm starting to think he was onto something. Some stories just make you want to go off the grid and avoid humanity completely. And while that may not be an option for you, with NordVPN, your internet can. Yeah, nah, not my best transition. I'll be the dress. I'm not gonna tell you thousands of Netflix gonna pay tax toilets on online experience or whatever that may. So to protect your dick, get your money, man. Kind of you wanna know what's not? Get your money. But apparently it's not. Here's why you should never give a chimpanzee Xanax. Sounds like common sense, but apparently it's not that common. Let this soft, sweet mineral melt in your mouth to rebuild your teeth and gums in just a matter of weeks. And never. Travis was a 13-year-old, 200-pound walking life lesson that lived with his owners in Stanford, Connecticut. He spent his entire life around people and was basically treated as one of them. Travis he would Scott. do things like use the family computer, watch baseball on TV. He knew how to open doors with keys. And sometimes he'd drink wine out of a glass after a long day. Everyone knew him, and he would even greet police officers whenever he would see them around in the neighborhood. I want you to remember that for later. Travis even drove a car, and he did it more than once. It's like if this dude was an actual member of society. Now, what would happen in 2009 wasn't out of nowhere. The red flags were there. He once climbed out of his owner's car and held up traffic for hours looking for a man that threw an empty bottle at the car. And there was one incident where Travis bit a woman's hand and tried to drag her into a car. But none of that was as bad as 2009. I'm not going to make any jokes because this oh is honestly my. one of the most traumatizing things I've ever seen. Because one day in 2009, Travis ah. left the house with his owner's keys and the owner and her friend yeah, Charlotte Nash tried to get him back. The yeah, owner. yeah, 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 yep, yep, yep. This that story. This that story right there. The problem was Nash used his Tickle Me Elmo to try to bribe him back into the house. And seeing someone else hold his Elmo pissed Travis all the way off. Travis brutally mauled Nash, tearing out her face and limbs and not even stopping when his owner hit him over the head with a shovel. And as the attack got worse, his owner had no choice but to literally stab him in the back. And a literal butcher knife to the back only made Travis angry. Eventually, police were called. Yeah, the same police from earlier. 
It took multiple bullets just to get Travis to stand down. Travis limped back to the house, went to his cage, and passed away. The victim survived the attack, but Travis had ripped over 90% of her face off. Like, lips, eyes, nose, they were all gone. And I am telling you right now, do not Google that if you have a weak stomach. Those pictures personally f***ed me up for days when I first saw it. At the I time, we didn't really know what set Travis. I saw it. Some sources said it was because Charlotte Nash was holding his Elmo. Others say it was because Nash had a different hairstyle that day, and that freaked him out. But a toxicology report confirmed that Travis the chimpanzee had Xanax laced tea the day of the attack. Travis's owner obviously got sued, but then she died of an aneurysm just a year later. It was just bad for everyone involved. But at the end of the day, the lesson here is the chimpanzee never went crazy. The chimp just went chimp. This man was attacked by an animal with a name that might just get me canceled. This is the work of Trombiculidin. But they're also known as guidelines, you better not homie, chiggers. A word that sounds like it has the potential to offend multiple ethnicities. Not to be confused with a species of parasitic flea known as jiggers. And honestly, I don't know what <laughs> Chiggers, or chiggers, chiggers which is apparently less offensive, is a type of mite found all throughout hold the world. Hold on, hold on. Chiggers, or chiggers, which is apparently less offensive, is a type of mite found all throughout the world, but the most infamous ones are found in the southeastern U.S., Midwest, and Mexico. Loki forgot the warning, so if you don't like bugs, this might not be the video for you. Because chiggers don't really bite. They'll actually just burrow themselves into your skin, make a little hole, and then spit out enzymes that break down skin cells. Which is exactly where the swelling and irritation comes from. The worst part is, you usually don't start itching until after the larvae falls off you. It's like you're not allowed to suffer until they're done with you. And once they are, they fall to the ground where they end up becoming their harmless adult forms. And normally the bumps they leave heal on their own. Also, the chiggers in North America usually don't carry disease. They're just really annoying to be around. But yeah, I can't tell you who named them, but I can tell you they did not have a good home life. And I feel like someone owes me reparations for making me say it. So somebody sent me this, and I actually think there's a right answer here. But first, I'm actually curious. Which one would you choose? Like, which one do you think you'd have the best shot with? Off rip, we can go ahead and eliminate the rhino. For a couple reasons. Rhinos have really bad eyesight and even worse anxiety. Mostly because they have to share a zip code with animals that would literally eat them balls first. Life is multiple choice, and rhinos consistently choose battery. So if this anxiety riddled war horse has a panic attack near you, you will be a chalk outline. The Komodo's an instant game over too. Because Komodo's don't flatline their prey with bacteria the way we thought they did. This homicide gecko's actually venomous. And they've been known to dig out human graves and eat the corpses, so don't think you can't get meal prep too. One bite and it's credits, and there's nowhere in the apartment you can go where this 10-foot leather assault weapon can't get to you. Now the Jaguar is actually an interesting one. Jaguar attacks on people are really rare, they're usually in self-defense. So you'd actually have a better chance of surviving in a room with yeah, a Yeah, but them up is heavy, though. Those are, like, one of the heaviest, like, big cats ever. Like, get that motherfucker pounce on you. It'd be hard to get him off while he's scratching you. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. As long as you don't provoke it or do anything to make him think you're food. However, Jags are solitary. And in a one-bedroom apartment, if that Jaguar feels like you're in its space, it could be lights out. Which is why your best shot is actually with the gorilla. They're natural pacifists that won't waste the calories attacking something that they don't view as an immediate threat to them. So as long as you don't look him in the eye, or smile at him unless you're trying to be Harambe's roommate, your best chance at winning and, you know, living is with the gorilla. I want to show y'all something. So I made a video on this, and a lot of people are commenting how they choose the Komodo, since all they'd have to do is climb a counter or just wait there for 37 minutes. Some even said they can manhandle the leather assault weapon if they needed to. I'm not going to talk about how Komodos can be nearly 10 feet long. I'm not going to mention the fact that young Komodos can climb trees. And I'm certainly not going to acknowledge the fact that out of all the animals here, Komodos are the only ones that will actively eat humans. Nah, I'm not going to talk about any of that. Instead, I'm going to show you this. No further comment. Alright, you guys. So that was Terrifying Truth About Chimps from Casual Ge Geographic, man. Um, y'all, y'all, let me know what would y'all rather be trapped in a room with, uh, in, in a room with, Komodo dragon, rhinoceros, a jaguar, or a gorilla? I mean, I was initially, no, no before we started talking, I go, I was initially even looking at either the uh, the jaguar or the gorilla. But now he just confirmed his gorilla because I was thinking I was like, you no, know, gorilla might not even harm you if it don't, like, you know, if it don't see you like that you know but um yeah he just confirmed it but you know y'all let me know before you start talking about it what like you know like, like you know you know what would y'all think you would like be in a solitary room with you feel me uh other than that man this boom with bali star man make sure you like subscribe if you're new join up with the all-star gang up in this thing and i'm gonna catch y'all in the next one man
100. Living right or wrong, I gotta watch out for them people. So I let go of my blessings, can't get caught up with the evils. Kept being pushed to my limit, it's fucking up my sequel. This is gonna be a long night, never knew there was a sequel. Uh, living right or wrong, I gotta watch out for them people. So I let go of my blessings. Yeah, go down in the bar, the girls all flashing down, down in the walls. 